So we've taught the technique to sliding, and now we want to talk to you about the three different moves that happen while standing up on the slide. So we have, we'll just start out, we have sliding, we have reaching, and we have lunging. And I think as you just said, this, this takes place when people are standing. There's a whole other collection of exercises that can take place when people kind of get into push-up positioning, half kneeling, kneeling positions. There's a variety of stuff that happens when you're down on the board itself. But in upright position, you just said those three perfectly. All right. So we've demonstrated sliding. And we've demonstrated that that can happen in a couple of different directions. And we just want to continue to make the point to you that the reason this is a circle is so that you use the board in a variety of ways and not get stuck with that side-to-side -side pattern. So let's just look at that side-to-side -side pattern and sort of relate that to our three planes of motion that we talked about earlier. So as you're going side-to-side, -side, what we now know is a 9 to 3 o'clock sliding motion, right? We're getting frontal plane motion. And these are all movements that take place throughout the exercise classes as part of the warm-up. It really gets your entire body moving in that side-to-side -side direction, breaking out of what is really what people do so much of during the day, which is just move forward all the time. Exactly. But we want to make sure that we're always adding other elements too. So sliding can be done with rotational patterns, which we showed is the clockwise and counterclockwise direction. And adding some arms to that can also really exaggerate that so rotation. So you get all that pitch. nice twisting through your torso, more through your hips, and so again, the more movement you create, the more muscle firing, the greater strength, the better, greater caloric burn, everything just keeps layering on top of each other. Exactly. Yeah. So the more movement, the better. So we're talking about sliding in all kinds of different directions to create rotation, and we can also slide in our sagittal plane. So sliding patterns can be done a variety of different ways. And you'll see more of these patterns in our exercise library, which will teach you all the moves that happen in the classes. But we just want everybody to understand how to move around the board, the various sliding. And so sliding clearly is you with two shoe covers on, really moving from a block to another block in one of the planes of motion, basically. Absolutely. And please don't be afraid to adjust your blocks for different movement patterns. So, Again, if somebody can't reach and you want to bring your blocks into that middle rank, or if you just want to create a different slide pattern, sometimes we move a block in so that this can be our point that we then move from to be able to get some different types of motion, rotation, and again, always find where that client or class participant is going to be successful. Absolutely. All right, so that's sliding, right? Two shoe covers on. And I know we, everybody understands what lunges are, right? Sort of off the three-act slide. But we take lunging on the three-act slide and create some pretty effective exercises as well, still utilizing constant ground contact, still utilizing ground reaction, still utilizing three planes of motion. So those principles, they continue on with all of the exercises that can happen on the three-act slide. Right, so for this one, I'm going to take off one shoe cover okay. so that I can give myself a little bit of stability here with my right leg. And my lunging is now going to happen to my left side. And so you would still reference the idea that you're facing your 12 o'clock block here, right? Exactly. And I am lunging to my nine. And what I try to do is make sure that anytime I'm doing a lunging motion, I'm doing it to many different blocks okay. so that I'm getting a variety of different muscles going in different reaches. So often, we do a lunge pattern where we slide to not, uh, 11, 9, and 7. Alright, so we've got one foot stationary without the shoe cover so it doesn't slip. And obviously the shoe cover on um, is your sliding leg that really lets you move through that. And again, I almost see that element that you talked about before, sort of the opening up and closing down as you went to those other blocks. Let's show that one more time. So this opening up type of lunge, right? Absolutely. Rotates the hips a certain way. 
and then closing down, we get a little different type of rotation. And we're right back to the more movement with rotation, more muscle firing, better strength, better caloric burn, better workout, more fun. <laughs> All of those things, yeah. you got it. Um, I think that the only other thing to add about all these lunges is that we're still doing those two other things that we've talked about, the constant ground contact and the ground reaction force, right? Because as I'm here and sliding out, it's, I'm not lifting my leg, it's not a motion where I'm not in contact. There's no ground. pause, There right? is no You're pause. constantly working. Constantly working, I'm controlling on the way out and I'm pulling on the way back in, so again, all those things you just said, I'm using more muscles, I'm being more efficient with my work, sliding out, sliding in, loading those muscles, loading to explode, ground reaction force, and boy, it is Feeling the burn. an effective workout. Yep. Uh, all right, so lunging, right? We can see what that looked like. And you just kind of showed uh, almost more of a sideways or frontal plane type of lunge, and then you added in some rotation elements. What about more of a traditional concept that people are familiar with, more of a forward or anterior lunge, but you can still add in those tri-plane, right, three planes of motion biases. Let's just quickly see what that one looks like. Absolutely, I love these. Again, moving the blocks in if you're feeling like you want the space between them to be a little bit more narrow. Okay. Otherwise, I'm using my stationary foot to determine how far of a lunge I'm getting. And so here, I'm going to lunge to 11, slide it back in, lunge to 12, slide it back in, keep the stationary foot there, lunge across my body to 1, slide it back in. So another lunge series. Yeah, that's again, the whole constant ground contact. You can see the work effort going in, but also coming out. It's, it's not stop. That's great. It's constant. Um, okay, so we've got sliding, we've got lunging. Um, I know sort of the third sort of standing up type of exercise pattern that's very common um, is what we would describe as more of a reaching type of exercise. Yes, so we do a bunch of reaching exercises where I'm again going to use my right leg is my stationary so leg. So no shoe cover. No shoe cover. This is the leg that determines uh, the difficulty of this reach okay. because it determines where I'm going. So if I back this foot up and I'm going to reach back to my six, again, I'm using this leg to control the motion. So if I'm here, it's a little bit easier than if I step myself way out here and I have to reach a little bit further to get to that back block. So once again, like you might see someone in the class maybe struggling a little bit. Maybe they're wavering, losing their balance. It's not looking controlled, yeah, right? Exactly. Um, and the easy cue is just get yourself a little closer, right? Self-select the distance. That's Absolutely. Just back your foot up so that you know that you're going to comfortably hit that back block every time. And this leg is nice and stable and secure. And then what am I going to do to make this exercise a little bit more difficult and a little more challenging? Well, I can move up, but I can also add different directions. And we're right back to our multi-directional design. Um, and you've got the blocks back there. It's a point to hit, right? So you've got that point of contact that lets you know you're kind of getting the most effective type of exercise, right? You're challenging yourself. You're not coming up short with a few of those reps. Well, I think this is a really key thing because I know that in our world of fitness, there are those gliders out there that a lot of people use. Yeah. And gliders are great sometimes. But here we go. Here's the chance to be a little bit more effective and efficient without the glider. One, it gives me a goal, something that I'm reaching to. So it's kind of hard with the glider to just say, kind of reach back to the side. Well, no. I'm going to reach back and hit my 7 o'clock block, yeah. and that is going to give me a goal. Not only that, but I know that because I have this stability back there, I can really sink into that, and I can get low, and I can feel secure, which is much more than I can say for a glider, where I'm just kind of out there in space and don't feel secure, so my reach might be a lot less. Right, so you become much more purposeful and sort of... I think the workload becomes challenged a little bit more, yet still successful as you have that block to hit. Incredibly successful, and I work harder because I know that I'm going to have something out there to reach for, and it's going to stop me. Yeah. So that I'm not going to get hurt. And 
and so now I'm going to reach, I have a goal, I'm going to get low, I'm going to feel secure and stable, and I'm just sliding that whole time. And I think, once again, as Christy's demonstrating sort of the multi-directional reaches there, uh, to kind of talk a little bit more about the benefits of that, glute, <laughs> um, yeah, that is the, the way to power up a glute, right, to feel the burn, to get that strength gain, um, to really sort of, you know, get the most effective use of this exercise, adding in those different directions, not just making it a straight back, you know, purely sagittal plane exercise, but as she comes to this behind uh, positioning here, we're getting some rotation, a little bit of sideways element. There's our three planes of motion happening again. That looks good. All right, so that was reaching with more of a, a backward type of focus, right? We can do some reaches that have more of a sideways or that frontal plane type of bias. And I also know that it can happen with more of that forward type of bias as well. So let's take a quick peek at that. Sure. So reaching could come here where I'm going to slide and reach. And you're adding in this arm element. I know this is sort of one of the common exercises that are part of um, exercise classes where you're getting all of this amazing lengthening. Exactly. Right? All that hip extension here, not just extending out of your spine, which could be problematic for some people, but really teaching people how to get the flexibility of that hip. Absolutely. Um, reaching can happen all kinds of different ways. So I did the lunge this way, but I can just reach this way. I can reach and lean. I can reach here. So different than the lunge, back. because you're not transferring the weight onto the sliding leg, you're keeping it fixed over. And I guess that's really the thing here. So let's go back to that backward slide. Um, so, oh sorry, backward reach. Um, it's this standing leg, right, that you're loading up. And that's a little different than the lunges. Where I'm loading up the Got it. Okay, so there's the key difference between our lunging and our reaching. reaching. Exactly. Exactly. So lunging is loading the sliding leg, loading this glute, and reaching is loading this. And so That's doesn't nice, it become way fun when I do combine both, though? So sometimes, this yeah. is one of my favorites, we have here, which is a reach, okay. right to a lunge. So talk about a great, fun, efficient exercise. And I got a feeling that uh, glutes are working pretty hard right there. Not to mention quads, not to mention hamstring, right? All the muscles working together. And that's another key feature here, right? We're not trying to isolate one muscle group, one body part. Bodies don't work that way. And if we're looking for efficient, effective exercise programming, we want to get all of these body parts and muscle groups working together. 